All right, so we've got ourselves a brand new battery, a nice Walmart brand Everstart. And we're gonna see if we can get this thing to crank, um, maybe even fire. So we'll drop that in there and see what we can do. Okay, so looks like we got our negative battery cable here. It doesn't look terrible, but the positive looks terrible. So we're gonna go ahead and take that apart. This looks bad. Oh man. Oh. Pretty crooked. Sweet. Okay, that should be good. Batteries in. Um, why is this cable so short? Dang it. Yeah, this will never reach. Negative works. Far as it goes. So I know it's ridiculous, but because I can't lengthen that cable right now, I'm just going to jumper it. And I hate to do like a floating positive like this because I don't want it to ground out. I guess I'll just wrap it up or something. Alright, cool. Let's put our positive on. Let's see what happens when we bump our negative. Nothing. Okay. Cool. Nothing going on in there. All right, let's see what we can do. Okay, so something I noticed when I got the car was that the ignition had been tinkered with a bunch. And like the trim for the steering column was off. So I also found they had like pieces of ignition switches in here as well so it's nice that we have these because basically what that is is it's the back end of the ignition switch so it's this little thing right here and we should be able to just like plug this into where the ignition switch plugs in and like turn it and crank it so that would be cranking right there this can do all the operations that a key can do with the screwdriver so hopefully i could just plug this in and crank it but let's see. Let's get that unplugged. I don't know which one I like more. I got two of them here. Oh boy, it's alive. We got lights. So it clicked pretty loud once I plugged that in. It looks like we've got a brake light. Charging light, oil pressure, and there was another light over here. I think it was the fasten belt, but uh, I don't know. Okay, so I think that's just like when you have the key in. So hopefully I don't shock myself, but let me try cranking. Hey. <laughs> Woo, it cranks. Dude, that's awesome. I don't know, it sounds like a healthy crank to me. Here, have a listen. Alright, here goes another crank. Well, that's awesome. Man, I'm so happy. It, it, it cranks, and the starter works and everything, so... I mean, that's a lot of problems fixed right there, or things I don't have to worry about, which is nice. Okay, let's see if the headlights work. Okay. All right, this should be on. Low beams, high beams. 
Nice. It looks like they both work. And low beams? Nice. Here's something I love about this car. It's got a little fuse box. Everything's labeled on the outside. And it's only got eight fuses for the full car. So that's it. And a lot of them, like, the fuse will serve, like, two purposes. This is all you need to look through for electrical. Not everything, but, I mean, you only have eight fuses that could be bad. Okay, so... There we go. And that's on, and then what I was doing was I was pulling this light switch. The lights would come on, and then I got a headlight, or a high beam light, which is blue, which is pretty cool. What else do we have? Oh, I should turn this off. Um, defroster switch. It feels like I'm going to break it if I press it. Cigarette lighter. Do I dare press that in? I don't know, don't these things usually take like... Oh! No way. Oh, I can feel it. I can feel it. It's totally hot. Found a little scrap of paper. Let's see if it'll burn. Well, it's definitely getting hot, but... I don't know. So that's cool. That works. Cool. Wipe wash. Dare I pull this? I don't know. Hazards. I don't know how this button works. Oh, oh, it's totally frozen. I don't know. I don't want to break anything, so whatever. I wonder if we got a horn. Oh, it sounds horrible, but yes, we have a horn. <laughs> so that lever's gone. That lever's stuck. No fan. And a broken cabin light. Alright, so I think I should just try and start this thing. I don't know. I have starting fluid and it cranks, so why not? But before I do that, I should at least look through some of the fluids. Firstly, oil, of course. I did look at this the other day. Um, it's totally full. And I've seen worse oil, like darker of course but yeah that's that's okay I'm gonna do an oil change I found a brand new Napa filter in the car which is cool so I love how there's Japanese on everything that is so awesome here's the cap for the radiator I want to call this Japanese um, anyways there's not anything down in that radiator like from what I can see it looks bone dry so that's not good but it's probably just because it's been sitting. Got Japanese all over the place. Love that. There's so much smog here. I don't even know what a lot of this stuff is. Or is that just the coil? Yeah, it's just the coil. But like vapor canister, I'm guessing. I'm guessing this is the AC dryer, the AC stuff. And then there's just all these weird lines. I want to know what this line was. Like, tell me in the comments if you know. It goes into the intake like where the air filter is and it's like a, it looks like a coolant line i don't know if that like heats something up for some reason oh that's awesome it's japanese right here too i'm not gonna paint this i just want to keep it like it is that's sweet cool well let me get this air filter cover off and then we can hit it with some sorting fluid and see if this actually fires Cool. Oh, the whole stud's coming off. That's fine. I hope there's not a rat's nest. Let's see. Oh. Well, that's not good. <laughs> there's not even a freaking filter, and there's so much rat poop. Oh my gosh, I don't know if you can see that. Look at that. Oh my gosh. So so much poo and I knew there was rats that were potentially in here because I saw this like corn cob like stowed away and eaten up but uh dang it uh hopefully there's not too much crap down there you guys can actually see better than me right now 
Uh, look down there. Great. Well, I can just hit it with the vacuum real quick while we're in there, and then uh, then we can do some starting fluid because I'm not gonna be able to get any of that poo out. I guess. I saw this trick on another YouTube channel, um, on Sleeper Dude YouTube channel. You can use a vacuum in combination with a funnel, and then you can get in really tight spots. So, okay, I'm just gonna hit it with starting fluid. I mean, we don't even have, I don't even know if we have spark, so we'll just see what happens. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't I didn't expect I didn't expect it to, so I gave it a try. But I think it's just because we don't have spark. But we'll check that next along with compression. Cool, I think that wraps up for tonight for me. So I was about to pack it all up and go in for the night, and then I noticed this line right here is really shiny. And it's like Amongst everything else, it is like clean and shiny. It's not clean, but it's like, it sticks out. And I realized it's like the fuel line. And so it seems that our pump works. I don't know what kind of pump we have, if it's electric or mechanical, but I really should have disconnected. Actually, it looks like that's the pump right there. And it does look mechanical. At least it mounts to the block. Um, But I guess it works. I don't know. I was smelling this fuel, it smells like nasty but not like the worst I've ever smelled so yeah I should have disconnected that before cranking I didn't expect the fuel pump to work at all but yeah so we'll have to look into that tomorrow got something pretty exciting today fan mail no kidding it is our manual for the B210 I was going to pull these spark plugs out, but I don't know if you can see this, they're just so dirty around the edges and I don't want to knock any dirt in the cylinders. Yeah, pretty dirty under here, it's just like sand and mud buildup. So these spark plug wires looked kind of new, but uh, as I was pulling them off they all left behind their connector, or several of them did. So, I have to fix that. I just don't know if the person who made them was bad at it or if they really are that bad. I don't know. They look new. Alright, got these cleaned off. Let's see what we got for sparks. It's really long. Alright, it's pretty dirty. That's number one. Looks a little better than number one, less uh, black. Mm, about the same as number two. Maybe better. I don't know. And that's number four, which looks the best. They're just wet because I put a bunch of WD-40 on them. Okay, you're gonna do a compression test on cylinder one. All right, this is cylinder two. Well, it's just about 70. Cylinder three. And cylinder four. Okay, that one's looking the best at, it's 130. Looking good at 130, okay. So the first three cylinders are not looking great. 80, 70, 80, 130. Hmm, I wonder if things will change once it gets going. We'll have to see. I'm just gonna do that old trick where I put a little trans fluid in every cylinder and then I'll redo the compression check because I wanna know, you know, what 
what the wet compression looks like. Kind of concerned. Only getting 80 on the first three cylinders. But we'll see. I don't know. Hopefully it gets better. And of course I made a mess. I made a mess. All right, now we're doing a wet compression test. Uh, this is cylinder one. Wow. It's way better. Uh, we're down at 180. So, dang. Okay, cylinder two, wet compression. Wow, okay. 180, so it's like 195. Okay. All right, cylinder three. Cylinder three, 160. Okay. I think cylinder three is our weak cylinder. 160 is still good. I don't know. And lastly, cylinder four. Okay. Yeah, like 195 again. Cool. All right. Anyways, today's the day I pull the carburetor, so I'll do a time lapse of this pull. So enjoy. At least we can look down the intake now. There's some some junk. I don't even know what I'm looking at down there. All right, guys, it's our first our first test for fire. I don't know what's gonna happen, but we'll just hit it and see what happens. Try and get you a good view. Here we go. like it's gonna start wow that's great there's a lot of smoke in the shop check it out awesome oh my gosh I've been so worried about this engine but uh, that sounded great I really want to do that again <laughs> oh that's awesome and the the fuel pump looks like it's starting to work a little bit that's the gas I poured in so that's nice Let's hit that one more time and see what happens. There's no carburetor, so it really just like revved up. All right. All right. I'm happy. I don't think I need to do that again. Also, I'm probably knocking all kinds of crud down the intake. Got my little intake homemade plug right here. Yeah, every time you hit the hood on this car, like, tons of dust falls down. So I've been really good about keeping this cap on for most of the time. I'm just, like, buzzing with energy right now because I can't believe that fired. Oh, this thing is going to run. And it sounded really cool for the split second that it did run. Um, man, sometimes with projects you just get so, like, I don't know, discouraged because nothing's, like, really happening for a while. You're doing all the, like, 
foreground work, all the little stuff, like cleaning up the carburetor. That's what I've been doing for like days is like breaking this thing down and going through it. And I don't know, I was kind of like bummed a little bit because like oh, everything's so dirty and rusty and like, is this thing even gonna run? And it's gonna run, it's definitely gonna run. So that's awesome. I need to work on the fuel system a lot. I have my new gasket kit coming for the carburetor. So that'll be this week. I'll rebuild the carburetor and get that mounted and then hopefully we should be able to start it and get it running. Definitely need new spark plugs though. I It was missing pretty hard once I got it running a little bit just now. So I don't know. The spark plugs were really like carboned up when I pulled them out and I wire wheeled them and whatever, but we probably need to replace the spark plugs, but it, I don't know, can't really further die an ignition system until it's actually running, uh, if there is a misfire from, like, whatever else. Uh, this is awesome, though. Super excited. So, great. I've just gotten the carburetor far enough to be opened. We'll see. Oh, the gasket stuck. Okay, carburetor's a little dirty in the bowl. Definitely needs new gaskets, that's for sure. They're just like gone. Float looks great. Yeah, cool. Check this out. It's a full on spider in his web nest in here. Just got done scrubbing these things. Not perfectly clean, but so much better. So much better. It's really nice having a little parts washer dish. My pump died though, on my parts washer, so that's too bad. Well, I was just checking out the gas tank, and I am pleased to see we have a drain plug. It's very dirty, so we'll clean it up and get it open. Okay, let's open this thing. And it is a 12 millimeter bolt. Why 12? Such a random number. Who wants me to open it? You want me to open it? What movie is that from? Comment below if you know. I should put on gloves, probably. Yeah, or my hands are gonna smell like old fuel for the rest of my life. Nothing. Nothing at all. It's a very orange color. If you don't have one of these, it's like a wire wheel, but it's like plasticky and like you don't want to damage stuff. It's like such a good tool. Clips right into your impact gun, your bit driver gun, whatever. It's great for cleaning stuff up. Maybe I just need to stick a screwdriver up there. Nope, it's just empty. Okay, so now that I know that there isn't any gas in the gas tank, I'm assuming there's no fumes in the tank either. Because before I was afraid of drilling out this um, locked fuel cap because yeah, there's no key for it, as there is no key for anything on the vehicle, so I feel better about drilling it out now. Also, I'm only drilling into the lock cylinder, not into where the fumes are, right? Okay. 
Cool. If you ever need your aftermarket fuel thing off, just drill into here. And I thought I was gonna put shavings in the tank, but no, they all stayed in here. So we're in. Trying to get into the gas tank through the trunk. I removed this panel yesterday because it was pretty easy, as you can see. And now I'm just gonna hammer this open, hopefully. I soaked it in WD-40. Nice. Looks kinda gross in there. All right, let's see what's inside the tank. Um, it looks gross, but it's still wet. It doesn't look rusty. Might be okay. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can even see this. So I think what we'll do is just put some fresh gas in here and swish it around and then drain it. See what we get out of that tank. Check it out, I got a new fuel cap. It's like $3. Fuel in this thing. Here we are again. I just cleaned out my oil drain pan so we can see how nasty this fuel is. Hopefully that fuel swished around. It's not much. It's really dirty though. Guess I'll let that drip for a while. Okay. Here's what came out of that gas tank. Looks pretty bad. I'll probably have to put more gasoline in. I didn't put very much in, maybe like a quart. Okay, I put a gallon of gas in the gas tank to soak overnight. Kind of swished it around. I'm gonna check the cylinders now and see what they look like, because I have that boroscope still. So let's pop those spark plugs back out and take a look. Okay, so I don't know how well this shows up, but I'm in cylinder one, and you can see cross hatching actually on the walls. So that's great. It's a great sign that there's like cross hatching. Um, four. So I'm guessing four and one are companion cylinders. The top of the piston head on cylinder four is kind of carboned up, but looks like there's cross hatching. Just draining the fuel again after soaking it overnight. Look at that. Nasty. Yeah, it's dark. Looks like oil in the oil can. I think that did a good job in removing it. Like, cleaning out the bottom. We'll repeat this process a few more times until it becomes clear, and then we can actually run it to the engine. Now we gotta replace the fuel line, and I think we'd be, we'll be good to start it as soon as we do that. Nice. Okay, so what we got here is the old fuel filter, which I have never seen a fuel filter that small in a car. It's crazy. All right, cool. Another one. The car came with a new fuel filter, so pretty sweet just like pops in right here I'll just fix that all right now and fixed all right yeah so we've got a new return line a new outline like pressure line from the fuel pump our new fuel filter everything's replaced good to go all right so I properly gapped the spark plugs and I got them reinstalled we're gonna look under the distributor Let's see What's going on in here? Looks like the points have a little, like they're peeling off the end. I don't know what that is, just like residue from rotation. They don't look terrible other than that. I don't know, might be good. I guess we'll just have to crank it and see. 
And honestly, I'm afraid to say it, but uh, we're ready to start this car. Just gotta put some gas in it, and then we should be good to start it. I'm afraid we're really gonna have to tune that carb. All right, that's two gallons of fresh gas, fresh from the gas, the, the gas store. Fresh from the gas store. Okay, hook up the battery. That's good. And then I kept a syringe full of gas because I know a lot of guys, they fill up these things to fill the bowl. So we'll go ahead and do that. Put a little down the main hole for good luck. Yeah, should be good. Um, bowl is full. Oh man. Yeah, I'm really excited. Here we go. Hey, she started. Wow. <laughs> started right up. I did not expect that. I expected it to take a bit, but look at that. <laughs> look at there. Oh my goodness. This thing is running rich. I think I need to just screw that fuel needle in before I just like the idle and stuff. I don't know. I'll mess with it. Okay. She started up again. Just some things. You gotta start up one more time. I think the choke is just on, maybe. I don't know. Okay, I've been doing some thinking and I'm pretty sure it's the choke that's making it super smoky because I haven't seen this thing open on its own. So we gotta, I'm gonna pull out that electric choke and then try it again. And then um, I got a huge, I have this big old hose for my vacuum and I just stuck that right on the exhaust pipe. So now I can vent my, whatever it is, rich fumes out.